thanks a lot for joining my session. I'm talking about mentorship programs and growing your team and community leaders. So my main goal is to say that uh, mentorship programs are good. I think that everyone agrees with that in this room. But also I want to say why it's good for the community and for the companies and maybe share a few tips how to sell it. Uh, to your companies. So I know that many of us, including uh, uh, Apache Foundation contributors, struggle with that. So uh, there will be no rocket science in this presentation, but uh, some learnings, and I'm happy to discuss it afterwards. Uh, my name is Alek Nashev. I work uh, for Gradle, uh, but actually I spend quite a lot of time with other open source projects. All my slides are already published. They are licensed under uh, Creative Commons 4.0, so just uh, take them, download them, reuse them, and if you need raw sources, etc., I'm also happy to share them. And yeah, let's begin. So, oh no, that happens again. Uh, so every time I give a presentation from my work laptop, <laughs> something goes wrong. And yeah, so. I actually spent a lot of time uh, working in open source communities. I also had quite a lot of uh, uh, challenges there. I had a major burnout, mostly related to my corporate uh, work, but still uh, it was somehow related to the community. And basically my takeaway that, yeah, I actually chop wood and carry water, and I spent quite a lot of time. It's actually one of the items from my art therapy. So I'm terrible at writing. Did I already say that I re-educated lefty? Okay. And yeah, I'm a serial community builder also. I uh, started in 2012 with the Jenkins project, then it was Wiremog, Gradle. I also do community consulting, I do, uh, mostly in the developer tools area. So there is quite a few logos, you might know some of them. I also contributed to a few Apache Foundation projects. I have never maintained an Apache Foundation project, so this is something to work on for me. But still, uh, there is quite a lot of them. And of course, since we are the Apache Con, I have to talk about the elephant in the room. Because even here, a few people already asked, what does Gradle do at the Apache conference, right? Is it a concern for you? Uh, no, but still I want to address it quickly. Uh, yeah, uh, that happens. So. Basically, in my talk, yeah, I work for Gradle. I'm not really speaking about Gradle in any means, and I do not believe in Gradle versus Maven, and I do not believe at versus at all in open source. So whether you use Gradle, Maven, uh, SBT, it doesn't really matter because what we talk about is ecosystem for Java projects, for Kotlin projects, Android, C++, and uh, I focus on ecosystem. I don't mind what developer tools you use, and I believe that they should rather collaborate. And in Gradle, there were quite a lot of changes in terms of approaches, etc. And uh, yeah, here's our Valentine's Day post. Uh, Maven, please be our Valentine. And actually, we really mean it, because there were quite a lot of changes in how we approach to marketing, how we approach to communications. And for me, uh, Gradle is just a part of the ecosystem. So we have our projects. All of us have automation frameworks and infrastructure. Then, yeah, you might have Gradle, of course, but even Gradle is actually built on the top of uh, Maven ecosystem. We use uh, libraries, plugins, repositories, and Gradle heavily relies, uh, relies on Maven and builds uh, on the shoulders of giants. Of course, there is whole GVM ecosystem there, and of course, there is quite a lot of maintainers that. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, who create different libraries, integrations, etc. So when we talk about a high system, whether it's Gradle or Maven, you have this whole stack of many tools, open source projects that work together. And of course, all maintainers from Nebraska or maybe from other states or countries, they definitely use, would use some support and contributions from others, right? So in the case of uh, Gradle, uh, we actually uh, platinum sponsor of a. Apache Software Foundation. We, did you know that? Oh. So, interesting times, right? I should also say that Oracle uses Jenkins, because they do. 
Okay, and yeah, actually uh, we provide the velocity that supports many existing uh, Apache uh, projects, including Groovy, Kafka, Lucent. So the velocity is distributed build cache. We provide it as a solution. It also has predictive test selection and many other things. And we speed up uh, many CI CD uh, pipelines for Apache uh, projects uh, by level of magnitude or so. So we have a booth where we can discuss and show you demos. But yes, 10 times speed up for your CI-CD pipeline is not something uh, uh, from a dream. And uh, Etienne will be talking about it tomorrow and also about observability of these projects. So come to the Gradle booth, and I'm happy to show some examples, because I also built Apache projects and Jenkins projects with the velocity. So let's uh, go back to the presentation. I hope you explain what the heck I'm doing there. And uh, yeah. Uh, I would appreciate any feedback. Actually, I spent uh, 12 years working on Maven, and I still like Maven and I work on Maven, so Gradle for me is an opportunity to build the bridges. Speaking of bridges, I guess nobody would argue with that at this conference, right? But what we probably would argue with is this one. Is community leader and maintainer the same thing? Who does think it's the same thing? Okay, that's good, uh, because we don't have to spend any time. Uh, when I uh, sh uh, presented this uh, slide at uh, FOSDOM, there were different opinions about that, but uh, yeah, it's uh, more focused on maintainers. So, yeah, of course, project maintainer is not always a community leader. Many of us like just to code, create features, ship them. Yeah, they put it to open source, but uh, we don't really engage it uh, with the community sometimes. We want to resolve our issue. Yeah, it's on GitHub, but that's it. And of course, community leaders are not always a project maintainer too, because sometimes uh, there are uh, people who want to spread the word, who do presentations, who organize meetups, etc., and do not contribute even a single line uh, to your project. And all of that, of course, is valued non-technical and not code contribution to your project. And sometimes there are technical contributions that are also not code. For example, providing feedback, doing designs. Uh, uh, reviews, etc. So in any case, we can consider uh, project maintainers and community leaders are uh, the same terms. They're different. And the problem is, for us, of course, maintainers do not scale, and community leaders do not scale either. And uh, yeah, there are still issues with the images. I don't know why. But if you see that something is terribly missing on this slide, let me, see, uh, let me know, because I see only this screen. I guess I will just, just look in there going forward. <laughs> OK. Uh, yeah. So leadership is, of course, not just about code. So this is a common uh, community pipeline we could imagine. Uh, so when uh, you become committer, then uh, basically you create uh, too many pull requests, etc., and somebody gives you uh, maintainer permissions. So this is how I became Jenkins maintainer. And then you become active, active, and become community leader. It's a common pipeline, but it's not necessary. Uh, you can uh, be just a stakeholder of the project, mentor, and from these roles, you can uh, transition to a community leader without actually being a maintainer. And uh, to be a mentor uh, or a uh, stakeholder in the project, you don't have to be a maintainer. You can be a committer, you can be just a user who is active, who participates in the community and share feedback. So by implementing mentorship programs, etc., we can actually provide a fast track to build the backbone of your community, to have more activists who do the, not probably write code, but who support the community, who organize the things, and it's something that is what we always need in the projects, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, mentorship programs are great for community. I hope everyone agrees. Uh, and uh, there is quite a lot of reasons, like onboarding contributors, not just individuals, but companies, doing community bonding, retaining people, because when you're interested in participating, when uh, uh, there is uh, quite a lot of investment for you, you are likely to stay. And of course, mentorship programs allow to drive key initiatives for uh, those uh, uh, where we always don't have time. Some improvements, exploratory projects, some items from the roadmap, of course, various kinds of guerrilla marketing, and yeah. As I said, growing community leaders. So this is what it works. For me, actually, mentorship programs uh, are quite inverted because, okay, 
For me, mentorship programs are quite uh, inverted. So first of all, it's learning experience and community bonding for all parties. So when you have a mentorship program, usually it's not just your mentors who study, it's also mentors. For example, you take a research project, you want to have experiment, you have a project proposal and somebody comes from a regional idea. For example, you want to have a message bus to interact and then somebody says, and let's do it using Apache Kafka. So for example, this is what we have with Jenkins Remoting, and this is how Jenkins Remoting of Apache Kafka was created. And two other opportunities is delivering something and actually driving the project roadmap. These are nice to have. So when you have a mentorship program, when you have some outreach program initiative, you do not always deliver the stuff, but you always deliver learnings to the community, which is more important, in my opinion. Another thing uh, is that yeah, there is quite a lot of outreach programs. I think you basically know some of these logos like Outreach, Hacktoberfest, Google Summer of Code, She Codes Africa, etc., etc. Some of these programs are popular, some of these programs are not so much, and these programs also have different types. So, for example, Google Summer of Code or Google Season of Dogs, it's a lengthy program where one contributor works for several months. On the opposite, Hacktoberfest is a one month program where you may have hundreds of contributors who usually submit smaller patches, but uh, there are also some opportunities for mentorship, for collaboration. So depending on the project, your implementation would be completely different. Uh, in Gradle Build Tool, actually we had a few projects. So we started in Google so, uh, Summer of Code in 2023, actually before I joined Gradle. In my case, my first Google Summer of Code was in 2016 with the Jenkins project. But still, uh, Gradle started investing and organizing programs. And this year, for example, we already have three uh, full-time projects happening in Google Summer of Code, and actually we used it to build uh, communications with other entities. So for example, we do projects with Kotlin Foundation, with Eclipse Foundation. We also do projects in collaboration with mentors from JetBrains, Microsoft, uh, Google. Uh, there are a few project, uh, maintainers from CheckStyle who are likely to join. So this is actually how we build connection uh, uh, through these projects. And it's a good uh, opportunity for mentors because they felt quite isolated uh, being in the great ecosystem. So now we work on a much higher scale. And this is code, but mentorship is not just about code. Actually, you can have quite a lot of mentorship programs in other areas. So for me, what I would definitely highlight is what we do not really have enough contributors for, like documentation, design. So basically these areas where you have less of participants and you can leverage mentorship programs to facilitate participation. So for example, uh, we did Google Season of Dogs. We also worked with Shikot Africa to organize a few events in the Jenkins project. Uh, also on documentation and developer experience. So by using these programs, you can actually go beyond code. Uh, mentorship programs and coding is not necessary. We had a lot of successful projects that didn't involve writing code. So it's also something to keep in mind if you organize it. And yeah, for participants, yeah, there is quite a lot of people who can participate, but one of the th key roles I uh, uh, found out in my mentorship projects is that there is lead mentors because every project needs a lead. And even in, in Google Summer of Code, we say that contributors lead the project. It's true, but it's also sometimes mentors who need to step up in. And these are the roles who are particularly important uh, for the community growth because these are your future leaders. So those who step up, uh, those who contribute, those who try to build communications, community bonding, and organize the projects. Because basically they can become uh, either project managers, coordinators, maintainers in your project. So if you foster these roles, if you find people who are potentially interested uh, in coordinating this project, this is what would be your focus for such open source mentorship program. And yes, uh, we do not try to make it easy because mentorship programs are hard and for many of existing maintainers, contributors, workers, they already have infinite backlog, backlog no time, 10 meetings a day, et cetera, et cetera. And asking them to be mentors is really complicated especially if you don't convince their company to actually dedicate them, uh, to provide them with working time. So in the ideal world, there is a lot of maintainers who participate during their spare hours. Uh, but what I always say, uh, people uh, need to have life. 
So for most of our maintainers and community leaders, we actually try to secure working time, and we work with companies directly. For that, there are two parts. So one part is just the justify, uh, justifying them for individuals. I keep referencing this uh, talk from James Bottomley, but uh, this is exactly uh, what we need. So open source, etc., is not a volunteer. Uh, yeah, you might be a volunteer, but you still benefit from that. And if you find as much uh, benefits for individual contributors and for companies, you can actually make this effort worth it and justify it. And uh, for many companies, return of investments is what they need. So yeah, mentorship is great for individuals. We know that we can have our pet projects developed. Uh, there is good leadership practice, learning experiences, and of course, getting some visibility, etc. So. And yeah, if you want, you can also get some influence. You can get elected to various governance roles, etc. If you really want it, and uh, yeah, for that, yeah, projects provided. So here's me, here's Evelina, who was a uh, most valuable Jenkins contributor and who got quite a lot of uh, highlights through configuration as code initiatives and Google Summer of Code, and uh, also opportunities for networking because Google Mentor Summit conferences, etc. This is what. Uh, programs bring to you as an individual contributor who joins. There is quite a lot of opportunities that get unlocked through these uh, programs. And community leadership for your career is also quite good, right? Uh, well, especially if you don't get enough management experience and want to try it. Uh, so in my case, I'm rather product manager or community manager, but I learned a lot actually from doing mentorship programs and open source programs. So. This is what individuals get, and this is the easy part. Uh, uh, and yeah, do not spend your spare time uh, if you don't have it. If you have it, it's perfect, but otherwise you will burn out. So just don't uh, do it. Going back to this slide, which again doesn't load, as always. Um, yeah, there is another part that I want to do. is about selfish contributor organization explained. Because for individuals, it's quite explored. For individuals, we for organizations, we can do a lot more. Oh, sorry. And for that, I actually have a few tips where it actually helps. Again, no rocket science. Uh, first of all, uh, yeah. Yeah, first of that is, of course, open source ecosystem. Because when we work on open source projects, there is a lot of integrations, a lot of things we would like to do, but we don't have time or expertise. So mentorship programs is exactly a way to do that. And for every big open source project, we have ecosystem. Uh, we want to have like integrations, developer tools, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There is quite a lot of tools. So there is a new tool every day. Of course, you need integration with GitHub Actions or OpenTelemetry if you are a modern project. And all of that can be done by mentorship. And actually, bigger project gets, more such integrations you need, and more such integrations you need to maintain. So if you're a single company, a startup, or even a big company like Google, eventually you can't handle this growth. And this is why you need to community and open ecosystem. And of course, it gets, uh, Two extremes, like that. Everyone likes CNCF ecosystem, right? <laughs> well, I can uh, provide the same with Apache uh, Maven build tooling. It's not very different. It will be exactly like the same. So basically, there is no way for you to avoid uh, investing in open ecosystem if you want your project to grow. And mentorship programs is a good opportunity for you as a company to invest. So if there is opportunity for collaboration between companies, for example, like we work with the Kotlin Foundation or Microsoft at Gradle, this is what you can do with from mentorship because it doesn't require any formalities. So you come to another company and say, hey, let's do something together. You have Visual Studio Code, uh, we have Gradle, let's do integration. Here's a few ideas. And this is actually what we do this year. So yeah, uh, one tip for that, open standards is actually a good way to sell it for the company. Because again, open standards become a kind of table stake. So if you don't integrate with open telemetry, you're going to have a hard time selling it to platform engineers uh, for your project, right? Uh, same for, for example, open API or sync API. If you do services and integrations, it's a must have. Or for example, for open feature for feature flag management. So everything around these open standards is a good opportunity to convince your company to invest in these projects. Because it has clear value. It ha definitely has some market pressure if you uh, ask uh, your peers and users. 
Another thing, of course, is features in our own projects. It's a little bit more difficult because you need to find users and you might have to find those who need it. And I'm pretty sure that everyone uh, with a big project have infinite backlog of features you would like to do or technical depth you accumulated, and nobody is around to handle it. Uh, yeah. So, for example, in Gradle, we have developer uh, productivity, developer experience. As to the issues that are being highlighted every other day on Twitter with quite a lot of threads, with quite a lot of discussions. And basically, this is an area we want to invest in uh, through our projects. So we have experimental projects we are starting, uh, and these projects try to address some areas in user experience and integrations. And this is a good investment for a company. So if there is a pain point, there is nobody to work on that, you can uh, put some time. And all areas like uh, compatibility, adoption in ecosystem, this is a good uh, point to handle. And as I said before, yeah, never do it alone. For all our if you want uh, to make the project sustainable, if you want to uh, do it efficient, uh, try to sell your company that actually you need to do it in collaboration. And the key justification is that it reduces your working time that you spent on the project, whether it's actually true or not, uh, but it's definitely something that uh, makes it more sustainable for you as an individual mentor, etc., having more people involved. There are, of course, many things like marketing, visibility in open source, recruitment opportunities. So that I will rather skip because I think that is quite straightforward. Uh, we can have a lot of slides and examples. But this is what every marketing team or OSPO team does at the moment with uh, such contents and program, trying to promote them, either to grow employer brand, to have some opportunities. Uh, and this is also what you should leverage if you want to sell it to your company. And last but not least is leadership practice, uh, because this is all we have, uh, and this is what we need to do. Right now, of course, yeah. Of course, uh, there are too many uh, opportunities for engineers to actually uh, lead. Uh, if you transition to uh, staff engineer level, to principal engineer level, you're actually supposed to have a project. And instead of uh, making uh, up an abstract project within the company that will never see the light, we have seen it quite a lot in big companies, right? Uh, instead of that, uh, you should rather offer people, if they're interested in uh, taking uh, on leadership, etc., try uh, that out. And actually, open source and community is a good opportunity to do that because you invest some company time. At the same time, there is uh, definitely benefit. There is no risk even if the project fails. And there is less of time investment for you because they also get mentorship from others. So for example, if you join as a GSOC uh, mentor, most likely they will be experienced org admins that will provide you with some guidelines, tips on communications, on organizing meetings, etc. So basically it's also a good opportunity for having your mentors to study outside your company. So this is probably a this is actually uh, what I used uh, in my previous companies to justify time for mentors. And actually, it worked like a charm. Uh, so just to finalize, uh, there are a few takeaways. Uh, yeah, of course, mentorship is just not volunteering. So every time we think about mentorship, we need to think about value for individual contributors and the company. And this value is actually quite high if done right. So mentorship is definitely good for your career within your current company, within uh, the ecosystem, your next companies. And it's also a great way to practice, to build uh, leadership skills. And this is what open source communities and companies need. So it's a shared interest, and this is an area you should double uh, down on. And of course, uh, yeah, uh, leadership practice is usually learning and development. So if you cannot sell Google Summer of Code, et cetera, to your company, most likely there is some learning and development budget somewhere that engineers are supposed to spend. So, and if you come and say that here's an opportunity, it becomes a little bit easier for everyone. And yeah, of course, all, uh, this is good for companies too. So some references, my slides are already public. Uh, Gradle in JSOC and other initiatives. We also had a blog post from my Dana Trace Times about open source mentorship, and there is quite a lot of content like that. So for Gradle specifically, yeah, again, uh, check out uh, the talk tomorrow from Etienne. Uh, let's discuss at the booth. I'm happy to discuss uh, the ecosystem, what we do with open source mentorship programs and an engagement uh, with technical partners. 
And uh, if you want to speak about developer productivity, etc., I'm actually doing a series of video interviews. Uh, maybe you saw Build Propulsion Lab by Gradle. So anything open source and developer productivity you would like to discuss, I'm uh, happy to do it on the record. I have a small setup there. So let's do it. And of course, all contributions are welcome. If you want to join a project, there is quite a lot of open source projects needing the mentors right now. For example, Google Summer of Code, yes, the projects are selected, but many of them just have one mentor, so it's a good opportunity to join, for sure. And yeah, of course, not just code, but everything else is a valid contributor and mentorship. So if you want to mentor someone in community management, etc., it's also possible. I'm doing it, for example, for a few folks at the moment. And it also helps our communities to grow because we have more people and contributors. Okay, some links for contributing. I guess every project has one. So I'm just trying top four projects I contribute to. <laughs> Probably too much already, right? Uh, so, that's it. And do you have any questions?